Hey gang, Mr. Spencer here. What I want to do today is go over how to create data tables and graphs for our experiments. Now this is going to be extremely important because what we're trying to do is we're trying to organize the data that we're collecting in our experiments and also present that in a way that other people can follow. So let's, let's do this. First of all, we got to get our, our words right. So a data table, that's what we use to organize the numbers we're collecting for our scientific experiment. All right, um, that we have columns, we have rows, uh, we have a whole lot of numbers. But that is not the same as a graph, okay? Graphs are the diagrams, and we might use dots, we might use lines, we might use bars, any of those things. But what we're doing is we're trying to show how two variables in a scientific experiment are related, all right? So in this case, we have dogs and awesomeness. Uh, so let's do this. Let's take a look at a, an example question and we'll kind of go through the process that we need to follow in order to set up our data table and graph for this experiment. So for this question, we're going to ask, does fertilizer affect the amount of peppers growing on a plant? And I just realized that this little uh, picture here, right there, that it's a plant, but it, there's no peppers there. So that's kind of sad. Anyways, for our, for our, um, sorry, for our question here, let's think about this. The, the very first thing we want to do with our scientific question is, is figure out what the variables are, all right? Because that's going to be extremely important for when we set up our, our graphs and our, our data tables. So if we have this question of does fertilizer affect the amount of peppers growing on a plant, well, what are the two things that we're measuring here? All right. Well, I'm looking at this and I'm, I'm seeing uh, fertilizer. That's something that we're measuring. And also the, the amount of peppers. So which one's going to be our independent variable? Which one's going to be our dependent variable? Well, when I think about this, I know the independent variable is the one that we are, are, we are actively changing. Or, in a, or another way of looking at that is I'm in charge of the independent variable. So am I in charge of changing the amount of fertilizer that goes to the plant, or am I in charge of changing the amount of peppers that are growing? Well, when I think about it that way, it's the fertilizer that I can change. So the fertilizer is the independent variable. And the other thing that changes because of the fertilizer is the, the amount of peppers. So that will be our dependent variable. So when I set this up, here's just a, a generic example of, of what this table might look like. And we're going to go through this, all right? But if we have our independent variable and we have our dependent variable, everything else is going to be organized around that, okay? So it's really important that you be able to identify those independent variables, those dependent variables. All right, so here's the first thing. We want to go over some of the characteristics of well-done, organized data recording. All right. The very first thing is that whenever you do this, you need to have the table set up before you're beginning anything. All right. Because if you've got your, uh, if you've got your, sorry, my brain's not working very well. If you've got your procedure all set up, right, you know exactly what you're collecting and how you're collecting it. Therefore, your table should be set up so that you can just put those uh, numbers in as you're collecting it. Um, you, you shouldn't be starting the, the procedure and then saying, oh, I should probably make a data table. That's a bad idea. The next part is this idea of a title, all right? So the title goes at the top, and we always use the title in the form of dependent variable versus independent variable, all right? So in this case, our dependent variable is the number of peppers, and our independent variable is the amount of fertilizer. So our title is going to be number of peppers versus the amount of fertilizer. So remember that. For the title, it's always deep, the dependent variable versus the independent variable. The next thing we want to do is once we start setting up those columns, we want to make sure that the independent variable is recorded in the leftmost column. All right. So in this case, we want to make sure that our independent variable, the amount of fertilizer, that that's all the way over at the at the left. The dependent variable is going to be to the right of that. Right? So in this case, we've got the, the number of peppers 
And you'll notice that there's a few columns there. All right, we're gonna talk about that here in a second. But first, one of the things that's really important as you set up your experiment is we need to make sure that we are testing the, uh, the independent variable or sampling the independent variable in as many, as many times as possible. So we wanna make sure that those are evenly spaced and more is better. So like, for example, if I was just measuring, or it's better to measure four amounts of scoops rather than just two of those. Now, this is the, this is the next part. The reason why we have so many columns in the dependent variable uh, is that what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that we do multiple trials. We wanna test each of these several times to make sure that uh, what the, the readings that we're getting are, are accurate. So for us, we, we tend to go for three trials, all right? And then we use those trials to find an average. Okay, next thing is we need to make sure that every column is labeled. So the way I typically do it is I, you, you give a title. So for our independent variable, the title of that column is the amount of fertilizer. And then you'll notice the parentheses Okay, those are the units that are being there that it's being measured in. So the amount of fertilizer is being measured in scoops. Up here with the number of peppers, okay, that works too, because I can see that we're measuring peppers and how many peppers we have. I could have very easily put the number in parentheses and it would have done the exact same thing. Now with our graphs, what we want to do is make sure that we set them up in a consistent basis as well. So when we set up our graphs on the x-axis, so the horizontal, the, the side to side, that's where we put our independent variable, all right? And once again, you'll notice that the units are underneath there in, in parentheses. On the y-axis, the up and down axis, what we're doing is we're putting the dependent variable okay, which is units. So if you look at the, the right here, where we have on the y-axis, or excuse me, on the x-axis, we have our independent variable, which is the amount of fertilizer being measured in scoops. And on the y-axis, we have the number of peppers. Also, it's really important to understand that when we're doing this, we wanna choose the right type of graph, all right? You might have a, a scatter plot, you might have a line graph, you might have a, a bar graph. We wanna make sure that we're matching the information that we have and the way we collected it with the appropriate type of graph. And we'll, do, we'll go through that together. But also, when we do this, you wanna make sure that you're plotting the averages, not the trials. Okay, remember, the trials are all going, are, are getting averaged together. So there's no need to, to plot each individual trial point. But we do wanna plot the average when we're making our graphs. So here's what I want you to do, okay? I want you to take some time and I want you to set this up. I want you to set up a data table and a graph for an experiment that tests this question. Does the amount of daylight a pepper plant receives affect how tall it grows? All right. You don't need to put in any numbers. You don't need to actually do this, but I want you just to get some practice setting up the data table, setting up the graph for this. So you'll need to make sure that you have a dependent versus independent title. You need to make sure you have the independent and the dependent variables in their correct columns. You need to make sure that those columns are labeled with units of measurement. You need to make sure that you also include uh, trials for mul or columns for multiple trials and then do the average. And then when you make the graph, make sure that that's properly labeled. So let me know if you have any questions and we'll talk to you soon.